So today we're talking about ultrasonic distance sensors and I've got two models in my hand now, the US015 here on the left and on the right I've got the HCSR04 model. Now they're quite easy to buy and I've put some links in the description as to where you can buy them. The difference between the models really is small, sometimes it can vary between the distances that they're capable of detecting, but typically you're looking at from about 4 centimeters up to several meters. Uh, again, it just depends on the model that you buy, but also you might have to do a bit of testing and it can vary from model to model. Effectively what they are is a speaker and a microphone. And one sends out a sound and the other waits for the bounce back from that sound. And they can measure the distance directly in front. Okay, so any object that comes in front of them, it can measure the distance to that object. They've got four pins, as we can see here. The VCC, which is your voltage, your trig, your echo, and your ground. So we've met voltage and ground before. Trig and echo are the sending and the receiving of data through the speaker and microphone that we have here. Now luckily they work really well with the microbit and the microbit has an inbuilt library to deal with them. So let's look in detail about how they do work. Part of the sensor sends out a sound wave, which travels until it meets an object and is reflected back off that object. It times this reflection from send to receive and using some mathematics and the speed of sound, it can calculate the distance the object is away from the sensor. Wire an upper sensor to your microbit is pretty straightforward. So I've expanded the pins here of the sensor. You've got VCC, which is your voltage. You've got trig, echo and ground. And here I've got a microbit upside down albeit, but I've labelled the ports from ground 3 volts and the data pins 0, 1 and 2. So we're going to take our echo pin to one of the data pins. We're going to take our trig to another data pin. And we're going to take our ground, straightforward enough, down to ground. And our VCC down to 3 volts. And that's the same no matter what version of the sensor you buy. So let's go ahead and wire that up. So now we've got it wired up and it's time to try some software. From a coding perspective, Microbit makes things really easy. So you'll notice that I've got a sonar menu here and that's what we're going to use. But how did I get that menu? Well, Microbit offers extensions. So I can click on extensions here I can do a search for the particular extension I'm looking for, but I know Sonar is a popular one. So if I just scroll down, you can see it there on the left hand side, Sonar. And all I have to do to use this package is click on it. It installs the package and you'll have Sonar added to your menu on the left hand side. Now Sonar is a very simple menu because it's only got one code lock. So if I take this out, I set my ping trig to the pin that I'm using. And as you've seen, that's pin zero. My echo is coming back into pin one. And what unit do I want to use to measure? Well, I'm going to use centimeters. So this is going to return a number that it's reading from the sensor. So what I want to do is I want to put that number into a variable. So I've created a variable called distance, and I'm simply going to put that into forever and put our information into the distance. So to start with, a most basic example is simply to show that distance on the screen. And I've put in a weight there as well, just to give the sensor time to calibrate each time it displays the distance. So let's go ahead and give this a try and let's see what happens. It's important that you give the sensor a full 60 seconds just to calibrate and to settle down. Once it's settled down, you can see on my display that it is showing the centimeter distance to the object in front of it. So as I move the Rubik's Cube closer, you can see that the distance is now changing, 8, 7. And I've never found it to be like super accurate, but it's accurate to a point at which, you know, most projects will work within those realms. Um, and you can always adjust your coding to adapt to it. So that's that wouldn't be quite four centimeters close there but it's accurate enough for the purposes of most of our projects. So I'm going to make a slight change just to make things a little bit more interesting. Rather than just showing the distance, let's set it up nearly like an alarm in that once we go within a certain defined distance that it triggers something on the microbit. 
Now, you could make it more complicated. You could add an LED light that comes on within a certain distance and so on and so forth. But for now, if you just get the basic idea of using some logic, uh, you can go ahead and make more complicated projects. So instead of showing number, which tends to slow things down in the system, I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to use a bit of logic. Use my if statement. Now, of course, you can use any mathematical symbol you want. So I'll go with the distance is less than, let's say six centimeters. Well, what do we want to display? Let's just show an icon on the screen. Nearly like a warning. We'll put in an else. So this way, if the distance is under six centimeters, it should show the X. And once the distance goes above six centimeters again, it'll clear the screen. Let's go ahead and try this out. So the slightly modified code means that the micro bit is going to show nothing on its screen until we move the object within six centimeters, at which point it displays the X.